saw from, from Nick, especially running the ball. He said that was kind of the game plan going in, take advantage of them crashing the edges. Yeah, we, we felt like they were a team that squeezed their ends a lot. And, uh, of course, that's always part of our game plan. It just uh, so happened to be a little more this week. And you know, I thought Nick did a really good job. And we, we, we wanted him to be more aggressive running the football. And, I mean, I felt like he definitely had, not just statistically, but you could just tell he seemed faster. I think he was playing, just playing and reacting and not thinking too much. And I think that helped him quite a bit, make some really good plays and really good runs. Is there any worry when your quarterback runs the football just with injuries, that kind of thing? Yeah, I mean, you always you know, got to worry about that. But we know that when Nick's playing, that's, that's our game. I mean, he's got to be a dual threat guy. Um, and, you know, a lot of those things are out on the perimeter. So you're not taking big shots. It's not like running in between the tackles every play. Um, and so really, if you really think about it, maybe once or twice against LSU, but I don't think he's taken a lot of big, just straight on shots this year. He's, he's pretty good at avoiding those. He's a shifty guy. He seems pretty smart about getting out of bounds, too. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, most guys, you want them to stay in bounds and get the extra yard, but your quarterback, you want them to be smart. And there's a different time, and I think he's pretty good at that. Getting the extra yard, getting out of bounds, as opposed to that third and goal on the one yard line, fighting for that extra yard to score the touchdown like he did. I mean. If it's third and one or two, or you're on the one yard line, you got to go get it. But he, he's done a good job of getting down and um, or getting out of bounds and getting as much as he can, and, and that takes hits off of him. How's he, how's he moving around? He's good. I mean, he'll be fine. He, there's no major issues. He just we rest him a little bit today, and uh, I think he'll be fine. What was the big difference? Because he really didn't get, he didn't really run a whole lot. I mean, he had some design runs, but really most of those were scrambled the first three to four games. Uh -huh. But today, you can tell he, he definitely took it on himself to take the ball on those read options. Yeah, and a lot of them are reads. And so or sometimes in the first few games, people were you know, making maybe give the football more. And then some of them were kind of in between reads, and we just encouraged him to be aggressive. And, and I think he felt more comfortable, too. You know, game five, he's done it a lot more. You're starting to feel like you, you've got a better feel for it. And he probably pulled a few balls that maybe in the past he wasn't pulling. And then, you know, obviously when he did pull it, he was really thinking run the football and was really aggressive with that and, and made some really good runs. Right, with their lines, particularly uh, Robert and Beach being a younger guy, I don't know a couple of plays that looked like you were almost running decoys at him because of his aggression and things like that. How much in the game plan were you looking to exploit a little bit of that youth and, and go after a guy who's going to try and be aggressive in, in the pass game, but also go after him and use kind of use it against him? Yeah, we we felt comfortable. I mean, he's going to be a great player in this league, but we felt comfortable running at him or, or running away and reading him. Um, so, you know, they've got guys up front that they're very active. They gave us multiple front, fronts, three or four different fronts. And um, for the most part, we just ran our game plan, tried to go at, at good tempo. And uh, they were changing up. I thought our offensive line did a really good job for as many different looks as they were throwing at us going fast of staying on track and, and blocking it up. So, I mean, I guess to answer your question better, we didn't have a specific plan for him necessarily, um, but I thought we handled him well. Considering the different type of defenses you face, the offensive line, have they almost exceeded your expectations in some, some instances in the game? I think that, you know, going into the last night's game, we challenged our guys really across the board, but especially up front to, to be physical. Be the more physical football team, and I really thought we were. I thought we, I thought from start to finish up front, we really were, we're really trying to be physical, and I think it showed as the game went on. Um, overall, the first five games, I think our offensive line's done very good. I really do. I think they've gotten better each week. I think we've proven we more strength of ours is running the football. At the same time, you know, we're going to be critical of ourselves. When we look on film, there's little things here and there that we know if we do better, that four-yard gain would have been a 20-yard gain or that, you know, negative play or, or that, you know, whatever. And, and that's the way it always is every week. Um, so I think there's still plenty of room for improvement. But I've been proud of the way those guys have worked together and really done a good job, especially in a lot of situations where people know you're going to run it. You gave most of your yards on those three scoring drives on offense. Yep. Uh, especially Nick got most of his mm -hmm. reduction just on those three drives. What were you seeing on those individual drives uh, that you liked, and then why couldn't that kind of happen the entire game? Well, you know, the first drive was really good. It happened quick. I think we went six plays real quick, and then, you know, is a good thing our defense picks one off and takes it to the house, so, but they're right back on the field. I mean, so we weren't on the field much in the first quarter, like three minutes. And, um, you know, those things happen. Then we start the second quarter, and I think we had two, two passes we'd like to have back. Missed some open guys. That stalled it. But uh, to answer your question even better, those, those three scoring drives in particular all had an explosive pass play, 20, 25 yards or more. I mean, it was just plain and simple. And 
um, in order for us to continue to develop and become an offense that can, can score every time they have the ball in every quarter, we're going to have to uh, not miss those open guys, and we're going to have to not drop third down balls. And I mean, it's, I'm getting tired of talking about it too. We're just going to keep working at it and get better at it. How's uh, you know, CJ doing? He's been seeing out there a lot yeah. last night, and then two weeks ago, a lot. C CJ was a little nicked up. You know, we tried to see if he could go last week, nothing major, but he just he really couldn't go. But he should be good to go moving forward. So you'll see a lot more of him. Right, with the, with the offensive line in particular, I, I know this coaching staff wasn't here last year, but this is a line that struggled, and so many of the guys are back are the same guys. Yep. What is the difference? Trey was saying it, it was partially the offensive scheme and the system being different and more catered to these guys, but was there just a radical change in body composition of these guys over the past couple of months? What has made them so much better where I mean, you're allowing the fewest sacks in the SEC last year, it was the bottom of the SEC. It's yeah. a huge turnaround. Yeah, you bring up a good point. I know this. J.B. Grimes is as good a fundamental coach as there is. I mean, he did wonders with the offensive line at Arkansas State last year. Uh, we led that league in rushing. I think we were towards the top and fewest sacks allowed. He's done a really good job with these guys. I think some of it's fundamentally. You know, he's really got those guys being much, uh, very fundamentally sound. I can't really speak to the pass. And two, they've got confidence. You know, I think we've built their confidence up, and they know that we're going to run the football. They know that uh, we believe in them. That's part of what we're going to do. And um, you know, I don't know if it's scheme. I don't know if it's tempo. I don't know. It probably some of it. To be fair to everything, is that they're also a year older. Every one of them, so they should be getting better. But but JB does a great job, and you know, hopefully we're running a scheme that that does you know give them a chance to be successful. Ricardo Lewis. Uh Catches some passes, just can't seem to break free. How's he handling things? I know he had a really good preseason, just hasn't really kind of broke out yet. Ricardo's good. Ricardo's going to keep coming. I mean, Ricardo's got still loads of ability, and you can see flashes of it. And, and we're going to keep bringing Ricardo along, keep trying to find ways to get him more involved, get him the ball. And um, I got a lot of confidence that Ricardo's going to reach his full potential before it's all said and done. Um, and you're going to continue to see him involved each week. He's getting better each week. You know, he made a really good run on the speed sweep. You know, when we really needed something to kind of get us started. Right on your long drives, was that the camp that you've been trying to get to? There, there's no doubt. Um, and it all goes back to whether it's getting a third down conversion to get a drive going. Uh, most of the time, it's got to be through the air, uh, or if it's off a of play action, hitting a play of 15, 20, 25 or more down the field. Um, and once you get that, you can get a defense in disarray and you can get your tempo going. But um, you know, you asked the question and you did too. That is the tempo we want, the common denominator is we hit an explosive pass. Red, having said that and knowing that the passing game wasn't as big a part of the yep. plan in this game, how did Nick grade out when he does convert on those third downs, does get the tempo better, has a great day on the ground? How, what would, how did he grade out there? I think Nick played a good game. I think this was probably overall, I mean, I know statistically throwing he's had a better day, but probably his best game. He had one, I don't say one poor decision. We threw a ball on the sideline that could have been intercepted, really should have been. Um, you know, the other two throws I alluded to were just poor throws, but they were great reads, good decisions. You just got to make the throw. Um, you know, part of the going in the plan was to definitely throw the football. It wasn't to not throw the football, but like I said, we're up 13 to 3 at the end of the first quarter, and we've been on the field three minutes. And so at that point, we said, man, you know, our defense is playing good, but the way their tempo is, the way ours is, we got to help them. And so we did make a concerted effort in the second quarter to run the football, and we had to, when we started having success, you just kind of stick with it. I thought we ran the ball good in the second, third quarter. And then in the fourth quarter, you know, um, part of me thinks, you know, yeah, we probably got a little conservative at times. At the same time, I like to think if we don't fumble those footballs, it, it never got as close as it did at the end. And, uh, you know, it would have been a little more fun at the end than it was tight. So. <laughs> Kyle Frazier uh, saw on the slide on the is that more or less for, for run blocking, big body type guy, or do you see him? Some of it, well, I mean, Kyle is a big physical guy. Uh, he, he's a good athlete. He knows our system. So you can plug him in in two weeks' time, and he, he may not know all the nuances of receiver, but he has a good idea of the scheme because I mean, he's played quarterback in it. Part of you know, we lost Jalen. We had two weeks. And then, like I said, CJ was a little nicked up, didn't know if he was going to be able to go. So, uh, you know, we knew Kyle and Brandon Foles were going to have to pick up more of the load, and I thought they did a pretty good job overall. And, uh, you know, Kyle will continue to be a part of what we're doing out there, and it'll also be good to get CJ back. Gus had said that a decision was going to be made during the bye week about Kyle and whether it be on offense or yep. defense. Is this, so is he now an offensive player? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if I can say there's not any scenario that would send him back to defense, but he's going to definitely be heavily on the offensive side. And, uh, you know, Kyle gives us that flexibility. He can play in the slot, he can play outside, you know, like Cody Burns kind of did when he ended up making the move. 
at the same time, you know you can put him in the backfield, and he's a run and a pass threat. I mean, people, he's not like snapping it to a guy that you know can't throw it. He's a guy that can run the football and throw the football. So um, he gives us a lot of versatility. But yeah, Kyle will be more involved in offense. Well, looking ahead, uh, you might have a chance to play some more guys uh, this weekend against Western Carolina. Are there any guys in practice who have kind of stood out to you that you hadn't had a chance to play yet but could get in there this Saturday? You know, I, First and foremost, we, we got to go win the football game, right. and we got to play well. I mean, I'm more concerned with us playing well. I mean, I want us to be crisp and have. I mean, you know, not go out and you know, slop around and have penalties. You know, we did only have one penalty. I thought was a positive last night. Um, and uh, there's some guys like a Tony Stevens, you know, you know that you'd like to get more action. Marcus Davis is already playing more. Um, you know, I think a guy um, like an Avery Young, maybe try to get him more meaningful reps too, but. Um, no, I mean, we're going into this game like we do any other game. We're going to go with the guys that we got. We're, we're getting healthy in most spots. And, and we're, like I said, I want us to, to execute and be crisp. And that goes back to your question. What happened on those three or four scoring drives? Well, we were executing. I mean, it's just that simple. Fred, not to say, not to say that you're overlooking any value or anything like that, yeah. but you do also play a tough opponent in, in a mm -hmm. two weeks from now. So when you are preparing this week, how much do you also – start to prepare and be conscious of the fact that you are going to be playing a very challenging yeah. opponent. They may not show as much this upcoming week. Yeah, that, that's a good question. You know, I think there's a lot of different philosophies. Some people want to just spend the week and just work on the next opponent, and, and some people don't. Uh, you know, we're more of the mindset. We want to treat it like a, we want to try to keep things consistent for our guys. So for the most part, it's going to be a normal game week. We're preparing for one opponent. We're not going to really work ahead at all. Um, you know, we're going to look at them tonight and tomorrow like we would anybody. And what do we think we need in this game plan to go win the game? and to be successful. And whatever that is, we're going to take it in there. We really I don't think there's any doubt we're not to the point that we can do things like that. we got to go out and worry about us executing and playing well and take it one game at a time because if we start trying to do something like that, I just don't, I don't know if we're to the point that we, that would be a good decision. How much of the, I guess, the, some of the misconnections with the receivers, because uh, on those drives, there are the past, long past plays you're talking about, two of them were to Trey Mason. So yeah. how much of the kind of, are there issues with kind of the relationship he has with some of his receivers? I don't think so. Um, you know, we, we dropped a third down ball. He, like I said, there was consecutive plays in a row that, you know, the reads were right, the routes were right. I don't think there's any not being on the same page. It's just a matter of making the throw, you know, or making the catch. And, um, you know, there's a, there's a fine line between being right on. I mean, the reads were good. Like I said, that's the positive. We're making good decisions. We know where we're going with it. Guys are in the right spots, and now it's making the plays. And, and you know, I sit over there on the sidelines, and I watch our defense is covering their tail off against some really good players. But the times they move the chains, it's because a guy makes a play. It's not because he was wide open. I mean, they were having to make some really tough catches, and that's because our defense is playing really good back there. We've got to do the same thing. They're not always going to be wide open. You're going to have to make a great throw in tight coverage. You're going to have to make a big time catch. You know, let's bail the quarterback out every now and then when he doesn't throw it right on the money, or, hey, let's put the ball in a position where the receiver can make a great catch. Those are things you got to do, and you got to move the change. So third down is a big emphasis for us in making those plays to get explosive drives going. I mean, that's, that's, that's got to be a big key and emphasis for us this week.